In the following film, Yvette Roundtree, an advanced practitioner in zoological medicine and honorary assistant professor in exotic medicine at the University of Nottingham, demonstrates how to castrate a mouse. It seems strangely fitting to say, take it away, Yvette. Or perhaps I should say, take them away, Yvette. So here's a little kit, he's in here, which helps. Actually, Actually, you might be able to do it. It might be if we pinch just one end. Push him. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, little man. So, anaesthetise your mouse. Hello, baby. Are oh, you turning around? Okay, fine, well, that doesn't help helpful. me. Let's get him out. He was the easier one to handle anyway, so. He says no. Come in. Hello. It's camera shy. All right, they're not looking at you, they're only looking at your testicles. Me. Okay, I might. There, yeah, it's actually a shrimp. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. And off we go. Off we go. Come on. One little iron injection. All done. That's it. I'm actually going to keep a hold of him like we did his brother yeah. so he doesn't get lost. Hello, sweetheart. Are you have to sleep for me. You can stop filming now. So this little man has this is Kip. He's had um, intramuscular metatomidine ketamine methadone. It works really nice and quick, um, and then and relatively unstressful. He's then having subcut fluids, um, subcut meropitant for visceral pain relief, um, and subcut meloxicam. And then he'll be on isoflurane as well. All right, little man. Our biggest things to be aware of with anaesthetics with these guys, a couple of big things. One is that they are very, very prone to alpha-2 related um, cataracts, so we use a lot of lubrication. They do go away, but it's a bit scary the first time you see it. And the other thing is that, obviously, they are very small, so they are very good at getting cold. So we do a lot to try and keep track of... Oh, he's had a nice breakfast. Um, we do a lot to keep track of their temperature. So we're usually using a meat probe thermometer because it's narrow and it does a slot, you know, it does go a bit lower in case anything does get cold. Um, and we're using that pre peri and post up. That's a clip while we're doing that, I think. Yeah. So it's basically everything that they're having injection wise until they get the atopams on at the end, well, and obviously the separate fluids. Everything they're getting is pain relief, which I think is a major thing with rodents. Well, with anything, but especially with rodents for preventing self mutilation um, and trauma to the wounds. There you go. Okay. 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 So, uh, the umbilicus is not that clear on a mouse, it's there. So we're kind of going between the umbilicus and the penis. We're going about there-ish. He's got quite a full stomach. He's obviously had a decent breakfast this morning. But it's nice and soft. It's not interfering with his breathing at all. So monitoring-wise, we've got our Doppler on. And then from a drape's point of view, because our fenestrated drapes are just a wee bit too big, we're using these sticky sticky dressings, which work really nicely. They also help to minimise heat loss. And we've got the Doppler on, which on him is actually mainly picking up his breathing rather than his heart rate. Normally we get the heart rate as well, um, but he's got quite a full tummy, so it's just pushing things around a little bit. So obviously that's just sticking to the sticky drape, it's not sticking to the mouse, which makes life a, lot, a little bit easier for me. So again, we're doing our... It's difficult to see the incision, with the, shi or the incision site with the shiny drape, to be honest. 
And we do just cut through it because it's so thin. Straight down with our blade. Probably the most difficult thing I find with these ops is, or the difficult thing for students learning and practicing is doing stuff without lifting anything up, which is tricky. It's a tricky skill to learn. But apart from that, we're pretty much not going to pick up anything for the rest of the op. So there, is, there are some... Ah, there, ah, there we go. Um, we have got some accessory sex glands under the skin there, which can be a bit of a pain when you're doing incision, hence gone a bit further forward. So we're going in cordially to get that test, to go and add fat pad. And there is the testicle attached to it. That's accessory sex gland on the inside. We don't need that. that very occasionally I have had to take them out of animals we've had an abscess in it but it's quite unusual there's Mr Bladder we don't need him and then down for the fat bad and this does work for all of our rodent species really quite nicely and then I don't clamp these because there's just so little tissue involved. I don't clamp them because I'm worried that I'm going to end up breaking something prematurely. So we're four knot vicral. And we're just doing a square knot on each side. And I just do a single one. I'm trying to minimise the amount of tissue handling on these guys and the amount of suture I leave in. could clamp to close or before you take it off. I don't tend to. I can see I've got a nice ligature, so I'm not too worried there. So we do have the concern with some of our... So continuing and then tying off on that second testicle. There was a dr slight drop out on the video, so um, hence you only see me do two throws. And I'm happy that I've got a good blanch there, so I'm not clamping, because again, that's just causing more, ta more trauma. So in general, although I do touch the bladder here to pop it back in, our biggest thing, um, especially with our small furries, um, particularly with the herbivores, is to minimise touch in the abdominal contents if you're not removing it. So lifting up that body wall rather than um, pushing the, the abdominal contents back in. And then closure, continuing with that four knot bicral. It is actually a rule that if you're doing, doing recording, you will end up with more knots than, if you, than you ever do when you're not recording. So, slight break while I annoy the, get rid of this little knot. And then we're closing with a modified cruciate. Um, so we're essentially doing a square knot, so starting off like a simple interrupted, or any simple continuous would be actually, and then doing a second bite um, further forward, and then tying that to the first um, knot. That's again always trying to minimise the amount of um, suture that we're leaving in these guys. So obviously the more suture there is, the more chance there is of a suture reaction. And you can see everything we're doing is very much on a horizontal plane. So it's one of the things I find students sometimes struggle with with these guys is actually learning to not lift up as you're tying, but to make sure you're keeping everything really on a level and keeping everything really even to minimise the tissue drag. Now, this is where I look particularly cat-handed. Um, I've, I've recently changed my technique. So rather than doing a linear alba, tying that off fully and then starting again to do the simple, uh, this subcutaneous layer. So I did just continuing it on. Now the difficulty with that is I'm right-handed. I'm not very good at stitching left, left to right. So I think on the ongoing, what I'll probably do is actually do my linear alba the other way around because it's a lot easier for me to do a 
subcutic pattern working from the caudal end of the wound um, cranially. Now, if this was a bigger animal, so if this was something like a rat, I'd probably do a, um, a subcut and then an intradermal layer. But with mice, because there is so little tissue there, and it, as you can see, it is really, really thin. So I actually avoid doing an intradermal layer and just do a subcuticular pattern and then glue. And I find quite often holding the end of this, holding the edge of the skin while I'm, t while I'm pulling through just minimizes the amount of tissue drag um, from the suture or rather minimizes the tissue drag lifting up or moving my patient. always looks like quite a lot of sutures for a very, very small incision. And then a standard Aberdeen knot, but again, being very, being pretty delicate, really trying to minimize the amount of movement as we're going. And then like in any other species, we're gonna bury that under the skin. And we're pretty much done there. And you can see this mouse breathing really nicely at this point. Now this is where you, you realise that the, uh, the sticky drapes that we use, which are actually tattoo dressings, um, but they work really, really well. Um, but they do stick pretty well to, this, to the animal. They stick really well to things like kennel liners, um, Doppler heads, things like that. So you do have to be a little bit careful removing them. But they do work really, really well. And then a little spot of tissue glue. Always try not to um, glue yourself to, this, to the patient. Obviously not an ideal thing. And then we always clean, any of our species, we always wash them down afterwards or clean them down with um, just plain water. We find a massive decrease in the suture reactions or, or wound reactions we've been having since we've been doing that rather than just leaving hibis scrubber as a Jew there. And now this little guy is demonstrating quite nicely, particularly with his right eye, that we do get a lot of alpha-2 related cataracts in mice, sometimes in rats, but almost always in, in mice, we do get them. So a little bit of lubrication, um, and then he's going back into the oxygen for recovery. And then we generally um, give the reversal agent um, we're using the atopamazole intramuscularly, so we're doing all our IM injections into the lumbar apaxial muscles, which is the one I find easiest for most of our species. Sacrificing them for the greater good, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so these guys I don't do a modified millers on, mainly because there's too much tissue directing the modified millers. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, these guys are going to be having um, you know, these. I, then he's going to be on twice a day Loxacam. So I'll take them because I'm not in tomorrow. I'll take them tonight with me. I think might as well. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully by the time we're at the stage where we don't need them on meds, then they can go in the big cage. Do you get this? There's this like glandular tissue under the skin there, just at the base of the penis, which can get in the way a little bit. Um, it's not too bad. So 
And we do all our roadmaps pre scrapable. I know the uni teaching is changing over to that now, Hayley's there. Um, it, oh, sorry, abdominal, which is technically pre scrapable as well. I tend to find it's much, works really well, um, much less risk of getting infection because the scrape, you know, obviously if you're stitching scrapable skin, um, that's not normal tissue. It's not normal skin. Um, it's much more um, fragile. And also, oh, you saw where they were, they were hiding away anyway. But also most rodents, not so much these guys, but certainly your guinea pigs and your rats are dragging their scrotum on the floor most of the time. Which is why you end up with a lot of post-op infections. If you've got it on the abdomen, what do you do if, you're, if your tummy is sore? And hopefully, and we don't tend to see much of an issue, with these guys up post up pain wise, they tend to be really good. But if you have abdominal pain, you arch your back. Yeah. If you have scrotal pain, you're more likely to push it on the floor. So they just it just is much nicer with incision. It's just a nicer technique and it's much quicker to close as well. So. So our, our limiting factor on these guys is how many kits we've got. Yeah. Because obviously you need small forceps. You can't... No, that's not true. You can do these with a normal cat spay kit. I wouldn't want to, though, just because it's hard to get through the linear alba if you've not... It's hard to pick up the linear alba if you've got big forceps. But you can see I'm not using... I haven't used my hemostats at all. It must be heather, wasn't it? It's doing, you can do an Aberdeen knot with an, as an instrument tie. I'm actually not going to this one. So the biggest thing when you're suturing these, or doing anything with these guys, is you've got to keep your, your hands on a level. You don't really pull him up really high when you're doing your sutures. Yeah. Okay, you can switch off now. A video of oh. this dude. And one little waking up mouse. In a sock. Because where else would you put your mouse? To keep him warm. He's actually put he's actually got warmer during his op than cooler. And here's his brother who was finished about twenty minutes ago. <laughs> who doesn't like his sock and is ready for his hide and the rest of his bedding to go back in. And apart from the lube around his eyes, but his cataracts have totally resolved. And apart from the lube on his eyes, you would have no idea that he's had anything done to him. <laughs>